an ugly couple of months for the markets, but some hot momentum tech stocks, or shall I say formerly hot momentum tech stocks, really taking it on the chin. Joining me in the bullhorn today, Eric Jackson, Ironfire Capital. What's happening with companies like Akamai and Juniper, which everyone thought was eating Cisco's lunch, uh, JDS Uniphase? Is it really a case of just expectations too high, you miss by a penny and you get killed? Or is there a reason to worry about some of these you know, supposedly hot growth stocks just not being great momentum investments anymore? Netflix, which some people would have thought of as like this big momentum stock, you know, it's even with the recent market pullback, they're only back to their June levels. Akamai, I can't believe how far this thing has dropped. It's back to basically kind of mid 2009-ish range. So that, that's a huge difference. And uh, so I think the market has sorted between some of these kind of just kind of pure momentum plays that you know aren't going to do well in a in a sort of a flat or a declining kind of global economy, and and ones like Netflix or like an Apple, which I own, which is which is you know you know in a different category. It's sort of its growth is sort of independent of global growth. Is there a case to be made at all for looking at some of the really beaten down, quote unquote, maybe value tech stocks? I mean something like AOL, maybe something like. Cisco, Hewlett Packard, I mean, these are companies that their stocks were not performing well even before the recent uh, you know, big sell off the right. broader market, and now it's even worse for them. Are any of those attractive to you? I like the idea of like going into these kind of beaten down value stocks, mm -hmm. but I think there's again there's got to got to differentiate. So for example, I hate a, a Cisco. I hate an HP because they're sort of beset by you know their ongoing management drama and you know a big company trying to figure you know out how to get value out of out of its portfolio. I do, however, love Microsoft, mm -hmm. which I, I am long, um, because uh, not only does it have a growing kind of steady business, you know, regardless of the broader economy, it's got it's got a strong dividend now. I think there's a good chance they hike that dividend significantly going into the fall. Uh, I'm also a big fan of the out of favor uh, ongoing drama that's happening at, at Yahoo. Um, not because I like uh, you know like the management uh, particularly or the board, but I just, know from your tweets that you don't. <laughs> but I just think it's just compelling. Uh, the, the Asian assets, even with the Alipay drama, mm -hmm. it's just so cheap relative kind of to, to what those businesses are doing. So that's why I own that. Right. So Yahoo and AOL, they've been linked for a while. Speculation about what those two companies, which are both very similar stories, uh, you know, they're not really dominating display the way their investors and management hoped they would. Should they merge as, as had been, uh, has been speculated for a while, or is it a, a case of two wrongs not making a right? It all comes down to price and what's the deal. I mean, if uh, if, if Yahoo is going to pick up, you know, a bunch of properties from AOL on the cheap, then I'd say, yeah, go for it. Why why not? I mean, um, you know, add it to the platform and there's there's money to be made there. Um, but you know, it has to make sense. And and I think AOL is a stock I'm not a fan of. Mm -hmm. It's floundering. I think their CEO, you know, got you know, wrote in on, with a huge halo effect over him that had more to do with Google's business model rather than his individual kind of management skills. So I just think it's it's not a not a winning company, not one that I want to uh, want to own even on a pullback.